Welcome back to another video, everybody. I've been thinking a lot this fall about spawning trout and uh, how we can most responsibly fish during the times of trout spawning without impacting the populations of fish that we're fishing for. Many of us are lucky to live in areas where we have wild trout, and those wild trout are a resource that need to be respected and taken care of so that we can have them for the future. So let's talk a little bit about spawning trout, how we identify the reds or spawning nests that they make, and how we can avoid them so that we don't have a negative impact on the fish that we're fishing for. Let's first look at some trout biology and their spawning behavior. Trout dig a spawning nest called a red with two Ds, and this red is constructed by the female who selects a site with sufficient flow and the correct substrate size. Typically they're looking for gravel that's a couple inches in diameter, and larger fish are able to utilize larger substrate than smaller fish are. For example, when I was a fisheries biologist, I used to do a lot of red surveys, and I saw Chinook salmon that could use stones and rocks that were as big or bigger than baseballs. But typically trout are looking for gravel that's any size from pea gravel to up to about a golf ball in size to construct their reds. The most common sites for red construction are in the tailouts of pools or gravelly glides, in shallow riffles, and along banks, which is really important to look out for as we often wade along banks. Once a female has selected a site for her red, she begins to excavate it with her caudal fin. After being courted by a suitable mate, she deposits her eggs in the depression while the male fertilizes them. Following fertilization, the female will excavate more gravel upstream and move it to bury her eggs in the depression. She may then dig trenches at the front of the red to help funnel extra flow into the gravel at the back of the nest. Her red construction results in a pattern of a pot at the front of the red, a pillow of gravel behind that pot where the eggs are buried, and then spill over downstream of the red where some gravel is carried downstream by the current before it sinks to the bottom. The easiest way to identify a new red is to look for clean substrate surrounded by other substrate that is still covered in algae. If you need to cross the river near a red, cross downstream of the red. That way you make sure that you don't step on any of the eggs that are buried in the gravel and you're not kicking up any silt or debris that might get lodged in the red and lead to suffocation of any eggs. Now let's talk a little bit about timing of spawning. If you're fishing for brook trout or brown trout, they're fall spawning species. The brown trout in my local streams tend to start spawning in mid-October and peak around Thanksgiving, but I've seen brown trout spawning in tailwaters near my home all the way into January. If you're fishing for rainbow trout or cutthroat trout, they're spring spawning species. Rainbow trout in some of my local waters will start spawning as early as February, but they really get going in March, April, and early May. Cutthroats tend to spawn on the descending limb of snowmelt runoff. So typically that means they're spawning in late May through June and early July. Depending upon the temperatures that they experience while they're incubating, 
Rainbow trout and cutthroat trout eggs typically stay in the gravel for a period of a few weeks if it's warm to up to a month if it's cold. However, it's important to remember that the eggs of brown trout and brook trout stay in the gravel over the winter. So even though they're spawning in October or November, their eggs usually don't hatch until February or March. This means that as you're fishing throughout the winter, you really need to keep your eye out on the bottom of the river. If you see a pile of gravel that looks like it might be the pillow of a red, avoid walking on that gravel. Over time, algae or periphyton will regrow on the rocks of reds so that you can't spot that newly excavated gravel. Therefore, if you see a pile of gravel that looks a little suspicious, give it a wide berth, and that way you'll make sure that you don't step on any eggs that might still be buried in it. The last thing I want to talk about is fishing to fish that are actively spawning. It can be really tempting when you see a pair of trout sitting on a red to stop and fish to them. After all, they're exposed at this time and they're vulnerable and a lot of times they're pretty easy to catch. However, spawning is a very stressful time for trout. They save up a lot of energy throughout the year just to make a one or two week bout to try and successfully procreate. If you care about the privilege that it is to have a wild fishery to go fishing in, or you simply want to be a good sportsman and adhere to the principles of fair chase, it's best to leave those trout alone. Just simply walk by, or sit down and watch them for a while, but don't fish to them. There are other trout in other areas of the river that aren't spawning. Go to a deep pool or a deep run to habitat that isn't good for spawning, and fish there. You'll find fish that are, have either already spawned or that are yet to spawn that are still willing to take your flies. Passing up a spawning trout ensures that you give it the best opportunity to complete its mission to make more babies so that we can all have more fish to catch the rest of the year. I hope that you think about this the next time that you're out on the river while there's trout spawning. Please be responsible, please be ethical, and think about the future and not just the present. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps more people see our videos on YouTube. And subscribe to our channel at Tactical Fly Fisher. Hit that little bell icon so that you'll get a notification each time that we post a video. And afterward, come on over to tacticalflyfisher.com where we'll be happy to take care of your fly tying and fly fishing gear needs. Thanks for watching and happy fishing out on the water.